Hi there, welcome to this new series where I'm going to be building the Clancy Aviation Speedy B. Now this is a design that came out in RCN magazine in 1996 and it was designed by Andy Clancy. And it was designed on the back of a plane three years earlier, the Lazy B, which came out in 1993. Now both of these aircraft are, uh, they've got 40 inch wingspan, they've got a very deep cord, they take off on a sixpence, they're really manoeuvrable and really fun to fly and they've got quite a distinctive look. Now the plans I'm going to be using and there's some build articles and extra in instructions and information which you can download off the Outer Zone website. And if you have a look in the description below this video, then I'll provide links there where you can get all of that. Now, the, the plans and the information you get is pretty extensive. And you can see on the wall behind me, we've got a whole range of, uh, of plans, uh, profiles, even the layout for the, uh, the covering. So this is the sheet that gives all the profiles. We've got all of the, the wing parts here. We have the fuselage parts. We have the layout for the construction of the uh, tailplane, the horizontal stabilizer. And then here we've got the trim, the covering patterns for that classic uh, Lazy B, Speedy B uh, wing design. So it really is quite detailed. Now, I don't know, because I haven't started yet, but I don't know how accurate these are going to be, these profiles. So we'll determine that, we'll see that as we go along and start to build the plane. And of course, as always, we'll check and double check just to make sure that they fit. But it certainly looks good, so hopefully it will be. Of course, it doesn't just come down to Andy Clancy's design and the, the, the draftsman who drew this, but there's a little bit of history of the plans, who scanned them, how they were scanned, uh, how they were printed, which can affect the accuracy of these, whether there's a little bit of stretch or shrink. So if they don't fit, it's not necessarily uh, a criticism of, uh, of the designer, but we'll see that as we go. Now, if we take a look at the fuselage, Again, a really detailed design sheet here with what looks like all of the information that we're going to need. I can't believe looking at this that there's anything left to, uh, to, to chance or for us to guess about because it really is quite detailed. And you can see this classic shape here of the bees, whether it's the Lazy Bee or the Speedy Bee. A really short, chunky fuselage for those, uh, those big wings to sit on. Now, looking at the, the wings and how they sit on the fuselage, the, the wings themselves have the nacelle attached to it and the cockpit area. So the wing fits, this is a complete unit, the wing, the nacelle, the pilot, and this little bit of the turtle deck here, slots in there. So it's quite an unusual design in that respect, as you'd have with a lot of planes where the wings just sit straight on. This is actually, you know, it's almost like the fuselage is in two parts uh, and the one part's attached to the wing. So that's going to be really interesting and really um, uh, good to set up and build. Now, we'll have a look at the wings. Again, with the wings, we've got lots of detail and um, hopefully nothing is left to guesswork. What strikes me about these, because I've, I've had these up on the wall for quite a while now, because I've been meaning to build this for a, for a long time. And I keep looking at it and it's, it's actually a very complicated wing in many respects. Lots of different spars, lots of different cuts in the wing ribs. So it's gonna be really interesting pulling this together. It's not the case that you often have where you just lay the ribs out and lay the spars. This is gonna be quite a complex uh, and interesting wing to build. And there's a little bit of a, 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 a kick up on the bottom of the wings here, which will be interesting when we're setting that out. 
So, where are we going to start? What are we going to start building? Originally I thought, I'll probably start with the fuselage. It looks quite a nice, easy kind of uh, uh, place to start. But then I started to read online and the instructions and things like that that came, and the build article, that came with these plans. And there's two schools of thought. It suggested that you build the wings first, and then you build the nacelle. And the nacelle fits within the wing here, and you modify, adjust the nacelle to fit in the wing. Now the other school of thought, the other thing I've read, is you build the nacelle first, and then you build the wing, and adjust the wing to fit the nacelle. Now, to my mind, it's a lot easier to adjust the wing than it is the nacelle, which is quite complicated. So, because with the wing, you just need to adjust the wing ribs so it slots in there nice and snugly. So that's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is build that nacelle, and then we'll get the wing constructed. And then I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how it goes after that. Uh, I guess we'll probably build the fuselage and then the turtle deck last. But I need to have a think about the order that we do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is start preparing some of the components and I'm going to be using the templates and as I cut them out I'm going to be measuring them, where is it? Measuring them against the, uh, the profiles here. We've got a top view of the nacelle and we've also got the side view. So there's lots of information there that will help us build it. Now I should just say at this stage that this plane, this lovely Speedy B, is going to be powered by this really, really nice uh, OS FS26. So one of the really small OS four strokes. And this is a, a, an engine size that's recommended in the plans. And I know other people have used this engine. And I think this is a really, really good engine for this build. Now, it obviously fits on the front of the nacelle there, and the size is just right for that. But what I would say is, I'm not going to be using a engine mount, a traditional or plastic or aluminium engine mount that is screwed onto the firewall here at the front of the nacelle. Instead, I'm going to be putting in a couple of beach bearers and sitting the engine on the bearers. I don't imagine I'm ever going to want to change the engine from this four stroke because I think these really do go together lovely from what I've seen. So it'll be a really good match. And I just don't like the idea of having a black plastic uh, engine mount screwed on the front of here with the engine. I just don't think it will look nice. I think a couple of nice beach engine bearers coming out the front of the firewall there will just make it look so much sweeter. So anyway, now I've said that, let's get on and start to prepare the components for that. Right, well now I've made most of the components I need for this uh, nacelle and um, I've used the, the templates and actually they're pretty good. I've obviously been measuring and checking as I'm going but we'll move the camera around and have a closer look at what we've got so far. So these are the pieces that we need for the, the nacelle or at least uh, the basic structure of the nacelle. We, we'll need to sheet the top once it's finished but we've got and it's all made out of uh, 3.2 mil balsa or 1 8 balsa with the exception of this piece of firewall which is uh, 3 mil ply. So we've got kind of the instrument panel at the end of the, the cockpit end of the nacelle We've got a floor plate that goes at the front. We've got the two-piece firewall. The, the front is the three mil ply and the back is uh, this uh, one eighth balsa. And you can see I've put slots in there for the engine mounts for the, uh, the beach beams. And these are half inch by three eighths. And uh, they just slot through there. It's quite a nice tight fit. I won't do that just at the moment. And then we've got 
a central piece that is kind of a brace and we can see on the plan here it's actually cut out to allow the tank well I'm not going to cut that out just yet because it weakens it and I, when I fit the tank I will make sure that this is trimmed out only as necessary now the tank we're going to be using is a four ounce tank as I said these have been pretty good on the whole and I have used them but mainly to just to measure the width and to cut them the right size where I've got curves on the top I've found something like this lid I use for t-pins and just use that as a as a guide to draw around so just just looking for objects I've got to uh, of the correct size with the um, the sides of the nacelle I actually put those over the uh, over the top of the balsa and I just drew where it needed and then for this curve which uh, which sits um, on the sides of the ring ribs just sits down you can see there's a wing spar to get that curve I just gone through and put pin marks along and then just cut it along the pin marks so really easy it's not worth sticking any of these onto the balsa to transfer you can just they're so simple we can just draw them up and cut them out so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull these together before I glue it and we can have a look how it's going to work and I'll find the fuel tank wherever it is I think it's under my bench and, um, and we'll just check everything's right before we start gluing it actually as we mentioned the fuel tank there is a shelf here that the fuel tank is uh, supposed to sit on which I haven't made because it's not necessary we can see this little platform here which the, the tank is sitting on and as I said we don't need that because the engine bearers are going to be coming through here and provide that support right well, I've now got this mocked up nothing has been glued yet but I just wanted to check everything fits okay and I've just measured everything to make sure it kind of fits in with the overall plan and side elevation of the fuselage that we've got now you can see the engine bearers come in here and I've done a three mil ply brace here just to hold the back of those engine bearers and I've kept it flush with the top of the the, the engine bearers because I've got my four ounce tank which is just going to fit in there like that as I said earlier I may need to take out the underside of this former here just to allow it to slide back a little bit I'm not deciding on the final location of the tank until I've got this fitted to the wing and I've got this metal uh, uh, bar here which it was just sat on and I will probably need to put some kind of support there for the tank when it's finally fitted but I'm not concerned about that at the moment I'm just concerned about getting the the basic structure of the nacelle finished so that we can then build the wing and get this fitted within the wing and then we can start to uh, worry or think about how we're going to support the tank how close it needs to go to the firewall as well there will need to be some sheeting that will go on the top here on the plans it suggests two pieces of laminated 116 balsa I will probably do that but I may I've got some very thin ply I think it's about 0.8 mil ply which I may use I need to think about the weight because I don't want to increase the weight too much but so I probably will end up using the balsa now there's also some attachments that need to go to allow this nacelle and the wing finally to be attached to the uh, the fuselage and I'll just show you this on the plans now on the plans this uh, nacelle wing and a little bit of the turtle deck which separates from the bottom of the fuselage is held on by elastic bands and we can see there's a dowel there and a dowel there that comes right the way over so they're quite long big elastic bands well I'm going to do away with those and I'm going to have a slot in the back here where the two sections of the turtle deck fit together we'll then pull this top down and there will be a couple of 
tongues which come from the nacelle down inside the fuselage and we'll have some attachments that go through the fuselage to lock this front section down. To be able to do that and attach it to the fuselage securely at the front I'm going to use a couple of pieces of one and a half mil plywood or uh, 116 plywood and I'm going to just slot those maybe that's not the right piece is that the right piece yeah slot these in either side like that to strengthen this front section because we don't want it pulling out a little bit of strength there to hold it will be to hold the attachments will be will be useful I've then got some three mil balsa which I'm going to slot down there and that will poke out the bottom of the nacelle and we'll be able to bolt it from the side of the fuselage. So what I will do now is I'm going to glue these pieces of plywood onto each side of these uh, side pieces and I'm going to I'm going to use epoxy for that. I'm going to epoxy this two piece firewall together and once I've got those done with the epoxy I'm then going to bring the whole nacelle together. The one thing I won't glue at this stage is the engine bearers because they will need trimming at some point and I think just leave them so I can move them in and out and just adjust them a little bit and, and get them right at a later date. Right well I've now done as much as I want to do on this nacelle for a while. I've got it to a point where there's still a lot to do but the next stage is to get the wing finished or the wing to a fairly advanced state so that we can actually make sure that this fits snugly within the wing. But we'll just take a closer look at this now. Right, I've now got this nacelle all glued up and, uh, and I'm really pleased with how it's looking. The only thing that isn't glued is the engine bearers and they won't get done until the plane is very advanced and I know where the engine's going to go exactly and I've done the mounting holes maybe although I may do those after the the, the gluing in of the the bearers but anyway they're done I've profiled the, uh, the sides of the nacelle so that when we come to sheet it that will fit on quite nicely you see I've just tapered those down hopefully that shows I still haven't decided what I'm going to do that with, whether it will be laminated 116, uh, 1 8 or a ply, a balsa wood or, um, or some thin ply. We'll, we'll see when the time comes. Now the engine fits on there nicely, you can see that and I think that looks great and I can't wait to see this running in the plane. The fuel tank itself we saw that just slots in there and again the final decision on that where it's going to go I mean it may come way back final decision will be done when we've got the rest of the wing uh, finished we've got the slots cut underneath for the tabs that are going to come through the nacelle and down into the fuselage to hold this kind of nacelle wing structure into place and we've got a couple of three mil pieces of ply which will need some work before they're, they're finished but they essentially just slot down like that on either side and then that will just slot into the fuselage and the bolt will go through and this is all quite tight in here with the plywood and the engine bearer and that'll all be epoxied and we've got the plywood on the back and that'll give real rigidity to this front end but to be honest having said that it feels pretty rigid anyway as it is so you know I'm not sure it really needs strengthening even more well it's really good to be starting to pull this together even though all we've done so far is this little nacelle but it's actually a really important part and getting this right is a really good foundation for the rest of the model now I'm going to draw this video to a close now because essentially we're not going to do any more to this until we've got the wings built and built so they fit this nacelle. So I, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you'll come back and see how we get on in building the wings in the next video and uh, it's going to be great to see this Speedy Bee start to take shape. Thanks very much for watching.